So you can see I've got the uh, front bumper off the car because I'm fitting the um, oil cooler. It's only very loosely in there at the moment. Uh, to do it on mine, I had to also take off this plastic piece that bolts on the bottom here. Of course, mine is an M Sport, so it's slightly different. Um, and I'll have all this to do again when I change the front bumper, I guess. A um, couple of things to note. I bought uh, the kit from Anthony Said, and the instructions are good, but the pictures, <laughs> they're supposed to be in a certain sequence, and the instructions refer to the pictures, and I can't make out the sequence. I've tried looking at it that way up, that way, that way, and it just doesn't seem to fit, so I'm not sure about that. Um, the only other thing I'd say is that in the instructions it says to drill two 25mm holes for the um, the uh, inlet and outlet um, unions. Uh, that's not big enough. You need to do them bigger than that because there's actually a 25mm across the flats, as you can see, nut or, or piece underneath, and that's got to come up through there. So um, you need to go bigger than 25mm. And the other thing, it says uh, drill 6mm um, holes for the screws. If I was you, I'd drew, draw, drill 7mm because um, you have to drill at an angle. And of course, coming at an angle, then if you want them to come up straight through, you need to do, drill them slightly bigger. Um, the screws I got, um, they're sort of uh, cab cadmium plated screws, but the trouble is they didn't have any uh, nuts and no washers. Luckily, I had um, M6 nylock nuts and uh, appropriate washers, so that's okay. The other thing is, you can see the back, where I've put the back screw in, it's on a slight curve, so I'm going to have to pack out underneath that. Now, I don't know how far forward you're supposed to bring the oil cooler, but basically it's limited by these pieces here. And... I'm sure you can see there that I've cut, I've trimmed these back and then trimmed down here to bring the oil cooler further forward. I guess I could have cut more out of them and brought it even further forward, which may have avoided the um, curve at the back. But I think I can cope with that by using um, probably a rubber grommet or something just to uh, tighten up on um, and to accommodate the uh, curve. Uh, so we'll see how I get on past that. Oh. One other thing I should mention is the holes in the side of the radiator cowl. So you can see they're there. Um, I had a devil of a job figuring, figuring that out from the pictures that uh, are supplied. But basically, eventually you realise that it does show a picture where it's just above the um, PAS uh, cooling pipe. Um, so we've got one just above and then one above that. I've still got to cut holes in here to allow the pipes to come out of the um, out of the radiator up through there and then through the holes uh, in the uh, in the cowl in the uh, radiator cowl. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, drilled the holes through. Um, that pipe's got to go down there. Um, there's a 45 degree uh, sort of union to go on that end and the same on this end that's going to go down to there um, at first I thought the pipes were ridiculously short and they're never going to reach but I think they do uh, the way that it works is it cranks around like that um, and there's a 90 degree elbow thing that comes off the side plate um, and they go into that so I think they do reach. Um, I've got to move this bracket. Um, the instructions do tell you you've got to do that, actually, because that's going to get in the way. Um, it says relocate it, but it doesn't say where to, which is, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Um, obviously, the thing I don't want is this dropping onto the um, auxiliary belt, so I just need to be careful on that. So we've got to this stage where um, we've got the uh, the two pipes into the cooler. Um, I still haven't actually tightened the cooler up in position, but uh, and the uh, the pipes are only uh, hand tight. 
um, but it just shows that all the uh, pipework works and comes through to here so now we've got to deal with um, this up here with the uh, oil filter housing and the um, the extra plate on the side of that I made more progress so I've got the 90 degree elbows on the other end of the um, pipes um, these screws are not for fixing the oil cooler to the body at all they're actually to fix this plate on the side of the oil cooler and they go in there so there are no fixings for the actual cooler to the body um, you'll need m6 i happen to have some stainless steel m6 allen bolts which i'm going to use um, together with washers that i have and um, the nylock nuts uh, what I was going to tell you. Oh, the other thing I was going to say was that you have to obviously slide this part over the um, pipe first. And then the pipe comes through and butts up against a, sort of a ridge area inside this outer piece. Now, of course, when you do it, it tries to fray the end of the pipe because this has got um, steel braided, steel braiding on the outside, which is very painful. And you can see what it's done to my gloves, sticking into my gloves and into my thumb. Um, when you put it on, try and do it in one go. I made the mistake of trying to do it. I thought I could have another go, but as soon as you pull it off, you'll find that you've probably frayed the end of the pipe more, and then it becomes a real struggle. So obviously go carefully and try and get all the frayed bits inside of the uh, thing and I, I did use a screwdriver to gradually ease it all in all the way around but then do it in one go um, that's my tip because when I didn't it took ages um, and several attempts for me to get it to uh, actually for the pipe to go into the fitting um, these are nice quality fittings so you can see they rotate so the they're sealed, but they you can rotate them even when they're uh, clamped up. Um, and they're very nice finish, except for I've chipped that where I've been uh, screwing it up. Now, the reason I chipped it is because I didn't have a spanner big uh, the right size. This is 30 mil and it's too big. So I had to wedge something between the spanner and the... I used an Allen key, actually, between the spanner and the uh, fitting. Um, let's measure the fitting size. That's what I've got. 26. I mean, whew, I reckon 27 is going to be tight on there. Yeah, no. I think it's slightly more than, I think it's slightly bigger than 27. Anyway, um, I only had one adjustable big enough to do one of them. Let's measure the other one there. Just in case that's a different size. Uh, again, slightly over 27, I would say. Okay, so two decent size ad adjustables will do it. Okay, as I'm not um, removing the gearbox today, I'm going to uh, try to put the these spigot pipes, these little things into here. Um, and I've got some Loctite sealer, um, thread sealer, which I'm going to be using. I have no real idea how to use this stuff, so I'm just... Uh... Putting it on as best I can. I'm nervous about putting on massive amounts. I don't think it would go into the oil way, but I don't want to risk anything. So I think I'll do the bottom one first. I must tighten it up quite a lot. to do this without um, messing up the coating on the outside of the fitting too much. The 
Let's see if I've got a socket spanner that fits that. Okay, well this is a 15 16th AF socket, which seems to fit okay, which is a bit of a bonus. Okay, that started to... Uh, Started to bite into the cracky. Well, maybe that's as tight as it goes. I don't think I want to force it any more than that. This is only aluminium. That's pretty tight. Here's the second one. This doesn't come out quite as quickly as uh, thread lock. Because if I squeezed that hard on the thread lock thing, it would uh, spew out all over the place. Okay. go right in. All right, I thought they were going to go in flush, but they don't. So now I've got this fitting. It's got the, I think it's called the eighth inch tapered thing for the oil pressure sender. Now the only trouble is, <laughs> I don't know which way the oil flows through this thing and Assuming there's not a massive pressure drop across the filter housing, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to um, stick it on the top hose because I don't know any different. And uh, well, actually, let's see uh, how these hoses are going to work out. I'll put that one there. Let's just roughly test it. being very very helpful let's do it this way that's better so that one would go there and then this one would go here like this Okay, so that's how they will look. Uh, I can't think of an advantage of having the sender over here. Um, I'm sure I'm going to find that I should have put it that side of it. Uh, the wiring, I'm going to use a PTFE wire and just uh, cable tie it to this harness when it's back in place and just bring it through here um, then it's got to go back here across uh, I guess that's going to go like that isn't it yeah that will still work um, of course the one thing I don't know is if this lot's going to clear the uh, the inlet manifold and the Hmm. Let's have a quick look. Pull this stuff out of the way again. Oh, I've got so many bits and pieces hanging around this engine. It's crazy. Makes you wonder how I'm going to get it all back together. Well, it's not going to go. It's just just a lot of that in there. Very 
roughly. So that's going to be higher than that. Um, the main thing is I've got to have an air pipe come through here. So actually not extending that one is probably a good move. This is the one I want to extend because if the air pipe's coming through around here, I don't want it to foul on this. So I think that's probably the right way around. So we'll go with that. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to bother recording anymore. Obviously, all I've got to do now is tighten it all up. I did have one additional thought that I should probably test. That this is going to fit and it's going to clear everything. And um, uh, That's it. Okay. So I think that's okay. I can't think what it's going to, going to foul on. There's nothing. There's nothing up here. Um, and it's going to be nowhere near the inlet manifold, nowhere near the pipe, the air pipe that comes round into the air box. Uh, so I think we're good. So that's it, all done. The final thing I'm going to do is, um, just to be doubly sure, I'm just going to tape over the small hole there. It just might like something will drop in there. So that's all done. Now the other thing I've got to do is do the water temperature sender. And apparently the way, or one way you do that, is you cut a section off of the top hose. Um, and you then put in a little aluminium piece, which has a, 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 a sort of casting piece that with a, a takeoff for the sender for the water temperature. So I need to cut one of these hoses to find out the diameter, the inside diameter of the hose because they come in different sizes. I've got a spare top hose. So um, actually it's not, it's a bottom hose come to think of it. Uh, yeah, okay, I may have to take my, Take my chances by cutting through this and um, then uh, checking out the size of that hose. 